Uh, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Statistical Computing and uh, Machine Learning. Uh, Nicolas Zabaras is speaking. So the lecture today is on what is called uh, stratified sampling. So this will be a version of um, uh, Monte Carlo estimators that have only one objective, and that objective is to reduce uh, the variance. So let's see what uh, topics we will cover. We're going to start with what's called the conditional Monte Carlo uh, estimator. And I'm going to give you a useful example that uh, has to do with uh, random sums. Uh, and then we will proceed using the ideas of conditional Monte Carlo to discuss about what is called stratified sampling and what is called systematic sampling. And again, all of these methods have only one objective. So if you actually understand uh, that by the end of the lecture, then you're all set. So that objective is to reduce, to come up with Monte Carlo estimators that have reduced uh, variance. So the goals for today's uh, lecture would be to understand and know how to use conditional Monte Carlo, and similarly to understand and use stratified and systematic uh, uh, Monte Carlo sampling algorithms. So let's uh, start with what the problem of interest is. We have some input vector x that comes from some distribution uh, p of x. We have some, um, let's say, performance measure uh, h of x. So h of x um, is a performance measure, and we want to compute an estimator that is nothing else but the expected value under p of x of h of x. So this is the expected performance uh, measure. Now, a little bit, a little bit about my notation in the lecture today. So if you see script uh, L, uh, that's, a mon you know, that's an estimator. Uh, if I start putting a hat on the top of uh, script L, that indicates a Monte Carlo uh, estimator. And if I put different superscripts or subscripts, those will be to identify if I'm referring to a conditional Monte Carlo estimator or to a stratified uh, Monte Carlo estimator. So if, for example, I wanted to do a, a Monte Carlo estimation of this expected performance measure, I'm going to say L hat is equal to 1 over n summation from 1 to capital N of hxi. Okay, so um, uh, remember that will be my L hat. Now let's do the following observation. Let's say that we have a random variable y that is maybe drawn from some underlying distribution g of y. And that random variable y is such that if I compute the expectation of h of x given y, that expectation maybe can be computed very easily and maybe in particular can be computed analytically. So we make that assumption that somehow it is very easy to compute this uh, expectation, this conditional expectation of h of x uh, given y. Now, uh, how can uh, we actually uh, use this? First, notice that this conditional expectation, it's an unbiased uh, estimator of the original L, because if I take an expectation of this with respect to Y, uh, effectively I get back my original estimator. Okay? Second and most important uh, element here is that if you look at the variance of this conditional expectation, it is uh, less or equal to the variance of H of X. Which means, if I am going to do a Monte Carlo approximation using this uh, right-hand side, since uh, the uh, variance of this Monte Carlo approximation will be 1 over n times the variance of this conditional expectation, and that variance is less than the variance of h of x, so using these conditional expectations will lead to a reduction in variance uh, in uh, the approximation uh, of L. Now, where is this uh, equation coming from? Uh, I remind you, for general random variables u and v, the variance of u is the expected um, variance of u given v and the variance of the expectation of u given v. So if you go and use uh, u to be, um, uh, in uh, this case, um, uh, h of x, uh, v to be uh, y, then you can see that the variance of h of x is greater or equal to the variance of the expectation of h of x given y because this variance is positive, so this whole first term is positive, so this is how we get this inequality. As a matter of fact, and I'm going to use this argument uh, in a follow-up slide, 
the higher this expectation, this first term is, the higher, obviously, the reduction in variance that you'll be getting in approximating with Monte Carlo using this form versus using uh, that form. So now you can actually appreciate what the condition of Monte Carlo uh, estimator will be. I'm going to be doing a Monte Carlo approximation using this expression uh, rather than the original form of the expectation of h of x. So before I show you the condition of Monte Carlo algorithm, let me just say that this whole algorithm also goes with the name uh, Rao uh, Blackwellization and it comes uh, from uh, the names of the authors that introduce uh, this technique. All right, so here is the condition of Monte Carlo algorithm. You sample n times from uh, this distribution uh, g of y. Uh, you compute the conditional expectation of h of x given y. I am assuming that these conditional expectations are easy uh, to evaluate. And in this case, I'm indicating, let's say, that we can compute them analytically. And then using uh, uh, this second form of uh, L, I can use a Monte Carlo approximation. And here is uh, the result of the conditional um, uh, Monte Carlo estimator. Okay, so I take um, uh, n samples of uh, y and then I evaluate uh, this conditional expectation for each of these samples. And this um, is my conditional uh, Monte Carlo uh, approximation. Now, uh, obviously, uh, as I mentioned before, you're going to get a variance reduction because the variance of this is less than the variance of h of x. Uh, so uh, again, uh, how much reduction you will get depends, as I mentioned, uh, uh, earlier on uh, the expectation of how big is the uh, expectation of the uh, variance of uh, h of x given uh, y. Uh, this is what is written on statement C. And for this algorithm to be useful and efficient, uh, you know, y has to be something that you can sample uh, very easily. And of course, these ex conditional expectations I mentioned this many times already, need to be uh, easy to evaluate. So let me give you one example uh, that has to do with uh, computing an estimator that is of the following form. I have a, a sum uh, of uh, xi's where xi's are coming from some, let's say, underlying um, um, CDF uh, that I call capital F. Uh, these uh, xi's are iid. And the sum that I have here of this IID random variables is a random sum. So the, uh, this um, uh, index capital R that you see in the upper limit of the summation is a random, is a random uh, number. So what I want to do is I want to compute an estimator that is nothing else but the probability of this random sum to be less or equal to little x. Or if you want equivalently, this is the expectation of the indicator function that SR is less or equal to X. Now, what is difficult in uh, uh, this calculation, of course, is again that this capital of R is um, uh, uh, not a fixed number, but it is uh, follows some underlying distribution. So let me uh, introduce first uh, some notation. I already said we will call F to be the CDF of the XIs. So let me call FR to be the CDF of uh, this sum S subscript R for some fixed R. So I'm going to start with uh, uh, the CDF of the sum of this IID random variables, but the sum, uh, this index R, I take it to be fixed. So here is uh, FR, right? By definition of the CDF is the probability of this sum being less or equal to X. And actually I can write this as the probability of X1 being less or equal to x minus the summation of xi's, but from 2, from i equal to 2, to r. So effectively, this f superscript r is nothing else but the CDF evaluated at x minus uh, the summation of xi's from i equal to 2 r. So I can use, effectively, for a fixed r, I can use the uh, CDF of the xi's, to approximate the CDF of this uh, sum of the XIs, but uh, a sum with uh, R uh, being uh, 
uh, deterministic given. So here is the idea of how conditional Monte Carlo can come to play a role. You remember we want to compute the expectation of the indicator function that SR is less or equal to X, but uh, R is a random variable. So what I can do is I can write this as the uh, expectation uh, with respect to R of the conditional expectation of the indicator function condition on the finite uh, sum from 2 to capital R, where R is given. And of course, we already have computed that this expectation, right, this expectation for a given R is nothing else but the CDF of the XI's computed at X minus the sum from 2 to capital R. So effectively what I have now, I have, a condi I have written L uh, as the expectation with respect to R of the CDFs evaluated at X minus this finite sum. And uh, so that's my conditional Monte Carlo estimator that I had before. And effectively, I can go and directly uh, sample n times from the distribution of R. So sample R1, R2, R, um, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, Rn. Okay, so that's my summation that I have here from k equal 1 to n. And then um, uh, effectively, uh, uh, this is the condition of Monte Carlo estimator. Okay, so these are the samples uh, xi, but now I uh, put another subscript k because I am for every given k, I'm going to have to sample uh, another uh, uh, r k uh, iid samples from my distribution f. Okay. So this is the condition Monte Carlo estimator. And as we discussed uh, earlier, the variance of this estimator for these random sums is, is, uh, is reduced. Uh, and uh, so that's a nice example of the application of conditional uh, Monte Carlo. OK, uh, let me uh, move to stratified sampling. So let's say that we want to compute uh, the expectation of h of x um, and uh, my distribution for x is uh, p of x, so that's my estimator L. And I'm going to use exactly the same idea as before, but I'm going to make the simplification that y now takes uh, finite uh, values, uh, 1 to uh, little m, and it takes those values with probabilities p1 to pm. And for now, just assume that uh, uh, this um, uh, probabilities are known. So we take that uh, we know what PI is, is uh, all about. So uh, in uh, principle, these events Y equal to I, what they do is um, they uh, split the sample space in M disjoint regions that we call uh, strata. And that's why the algorithm goes with the name stratified sampling uh, or stratified uh, Monte Carlo estimator. So if I uh, use all of this, right, I can uh, write um, this uh, uh, expectation of uh, uh, h of x that I have here. So this is my original estimator. I can write this as the expectation in y of the conditional expectation of h of x given y. And uh, because y takes finite values with probabilities pi's, I can write this exactly the way that you see uh, here. Okay. And now uh, you are ready basically uh, to compute uh, Monte Carlo approximations uh, for um, uh, this estimator. And also you're ready to write down uh, the uh, variance of this estimator. And again, because of this uh, condition here, you anticipate that the variance uh, of this stratified estimator is going to be less than the original variance. So let me uh, first uh, do the uh, Monte Carlo approximation. Um, so if I can go back. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to approximate for a given i, right? We're going to sample from this uh, conditional distribution uh, and we're going to approximate the expectation. And this is what I have over here. So for each uh, stratum i, I sample an i times. These are my samples x, i, j, given y equal to uh, i. So I put this explicitly to remind you that these samples are for the i-th uh, 
uh, stratum, but I don't really need this because I use a subscript I here to emphasize that. And then uh, my estimator is the summation of uh, overall strata of pi times 1 over ni times this summation from 1 to ni. So this is the Monte Carlo approximation, and this comes from this um, construct uh, uh, that we use splitting the sample space uh, in um, uh, m different strata. Now you can compute the uh, variance for this new estimator quite easily because you know how to compute the variance of um, uh, a Monte Carlo estimator. So the variance of this would be nothing else but pi squared over ni times the variance of h of x given y equal to i. And let me define this to actually be uh, sigma i square. So sigma i square is the conditional variance of h of x in its region um, i. Okay, So the variance of my stratified estimator is summation of pi square sigma i square uh, divided by ni. And again, I uh, emphasize the notation here. L, script L is my original estimator. L hat is uh, the, um, you know, the approximation, the Monte Carlo approximation. And I use uh, the superscript S to emphasize that this is uh, a stratified uh, Monte Carlo uh, estimator. Now, uh, in um, you know what we have done up to now, right? So we assume that uh, uh, pi uh, is uh, known, and um, um, we said we sample ni um, uh, samples for uh, its uh, in its region uh, i. But the question is, uh, can we actually compute some uh, optimal number of samples in its region so that somehow? Uh, we get uh, the minimum possible uh, variance? And the answer is, yes, we can do this. And here is uh, the optimal uh, stratified sampling estimator, where ni star is n times pi sigma i divided by this summation of pj sigma j over all uh, m uh, uh, strata. And uh, if you plug in this, to the Monte Carlo estimator that I had uh, before, uh, you can actually compute that the optimal variance of the stratified Monte Carlo estimator is 1 over n summation of pi sigma i uh, from i 1 to m square. Uh, there is no uh, complication uh, or anything like that uh, in the uh, algebra. This is simply by substituting uh, ni star in the estimator that I had uh, in the previous uh, slide. So you can see that um, this optimal uh, ni, uh, it basically requires, right, it's proportional to this product pi uh, sigma i, and that makes this estimator not very practical, right? So uh, first it requires that you know pi, okay, and even if you assume that you do know pi, uh, you need to know sigma i. So you need to know the conditional variance in its region i, and that uh, uh, may not uh, be available to you. So you may have um, to uh, estimate uh, sigma i by doing some, um, as I call in the slides here, some pilot runs to estimate what sigma i is, but certainly it is uh, not readily uh, available. Okay, so this implementation of this uh, uh, optimal estimator that I denote here with the star uh, may not be uh, as easy uh, to implement uh, in practice. So can we actually uh, come up with another estimator, maybe not as good, but one that does not require sigma i? And the answer is yes. And here is uh, uh, that estimator. That estimator will take that ni is proportional to pi. Okay, So n is the total number of samples. Uh, okay, so I am going to select uh, samples and i for region i that is proportional to the probability of that region. So if you think about it, this makes um, lots of sense, right, from practical point of view. Uh, if pi is high, you sample more in that i-th region. So you can actually show that, uh, obviously, that if you 
if you are going to use an i equal p i n, uh, that uh, the variance of uh, this stratified, uh, the corresponding stratified sampling Monte Carlo estimator is less than the Monte Carlo estimator of uh, uh, L. And the proof is actually rather straightforward. If you substitute n i equal uh, pi i of n in the general formula we had for the variance of the stratified Monte Carlo estimator, so if you put n i equal pi i times n, what you get is you get that the variance of this estimator now becomes 1 over n times pi i sigma i square with simple substitution. So if you put n i to be pi i times n, uh, you get 1 pi i divided by n sigma i uh, square. Okay, so um, now uh, how do we prove uh, this condition? The algebra is rather straightforward, right? So remember that the variance of L hat is the variance of H of X divided by N. Now the variance of H of X is greater than the expectation of the uh, variance of H of X given uh, Y. All right, so I am using now that the variance of h of x is greater than the expectation of the variance of h of x given y. And um, uh, because uh, uh, the outer expectation is on y and y takes m values with probability pi, and because the variance, uh, this variance uh, in its uh, stratum i is sigma i square, this is equal to exactly to pi sigma i square. And from this equation here, this is n times the variance of this particular stratified sampling estimator. And then you see immediately that the variance of this estimator is uh, less than the variance of the original uh, Monte Carlo estimator. So again, this is not um, uh, optimal, but um, uh, you know, uh, this is... Um, uh, much easier to implement and the reason again has to do with the fact that the number of samples that you take um, is only proportional to pi and it does not require an a priori knowledge of uh, sigma i. So you don't need to know the conditional variance uh, in its uh, region. Okay, um, so um, so we prove that uh, this stratified uh, sampling estimator has um, less uh, variance uh, than the, uh, you know, um, the original Monte Carlo estimator. And uh, let me introduce now some uh, other approximations. And uh, the approximation that I have on this slide goes with the name um, uh, systematic uh, uh, sampling uh, method. So here is what I'm going to do. Uh, we're going to assume that the, you know, we have uh, m different strata and we're going to uh, assign uh, probabilities pi in each strata to be 1 over n. All right, so we give equal probability to each region and not only that, but we're going to take the number of samples in each region to be the same and equal uh, to uh, n over m. So if you take your um, uh, conditional estimator that I had uh, before. So you remember, this is the estimator that we had before. In each uh, stratum i, we take uh, uh, ni samples uh, xij, and this is our Monte Carlo estimator, all right? So this is the stratified uh, sampling estimator. If we plug in pi equal to 1 over m and ni equal to n over m, uh, this is what we get, all right? So that's another uh, stratified sampling estimator and this particular estimator the way that you see it here it goes with the name systematic uh, sampling estimator and the method you know is also known as systematic uh, sampling uh, uh, Monte Carlo method okay um, again uh, all of them uh, utilize uh, one form or another of the general stratified sampling estimator. The only differences are we use uh, different uh, approximations from the optimal to some uh, common sense approximations for uh, PI and NI uh, for each of the uh, M strata that we split in the sample space. Okay, um, let me uh, 
extend these ideas of us, you know, having this discrete random variable y and splitting the sample space in this m disjoint regions. Let me do this for continuous random variables. So my estimator is again to compute the expectation of h of x under pi of x. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to assume that the support space of uh, x is this uh, uh, domain D. And so I am going to take my stochastic support space and split it in capital M regions. All of them disjoint, but all of them together, they form D. Okay, so, uh, so instead of now doing this integration uh, in this general way that you see here, I am going to uh, do the integration uh, and the expectation, if you like, in each uh, subdomain dm of uh, the support space of the random variable x. So let me introduce some of the notation. So if you write this integral as an integral, you know, over each uh, domain and then you sump over all the domains, you're going to get basically summation over little m of this integral in uh, the domain uh, dm. Now, what I have done in uh, this equation on the right-hand side here, instead of p of x, I have used the conditional PDF, uh, pm of x. And what is the conditional PDF? Is the PDF, it's x, basically it's the distribution uh, of x, given that I am in region uh, m. So effectively, p of m is nothing else but the indicator function that I am in region m times p of x and divided by the normalization factor gm. And what is the normalization factor gm? It's nothing else but uh, the integral of p of x in the subdomain dm. Okay, so effectively what I have done is, right, when you write this as summation on little m of this integral in every domain m, I multiply it and divide it by gm to get the expression that you see here on the right hand side. So effectively what I have is, I have written my original estimator uh, L, this script L, as uh, this sum uh, of Zm times some estimators that they are now conditional estimators, conditional that I am in different regions of the uh, support space, right? So again, these DMs are disjoint and uh, their union is basically the whole of the domain uh, D. Okay. So let's start uh, making some um, uh, Monte Carlo uh, approximations for this estimator. So effectively what I'm going to do is I am going to take samples from this conditional distribution. I'm going to come up with a Monte Carlo approximation of this integral. And then I will put all together to get a stratified sampling estimator, uh, an approximator for uh, uh, script L. So if I do all of this uh, rather straightforward uh, for each um, uh, you know, again, subdomain uh, little m, I am going to take uh, capital N subscript m samples. I am going to evaluate uh, the conditional expectation of h of x with uh, Monte Carlo. Then I'm going to put the whole thing together. And this is, um, uh, uh, and I'm interested again, uh, this equation is exact, right? There's no approximation yet on this equation. So now I am going to do a Monte Carlo approximation of this integral. And the approximation, this Monte Carlo stratified approximator, would be nothing else but summation of Zm, 1 over m, times uh, this um, uh, sample, uh, uh, you know, this is the sample mean, basically. This is the Monte Carlo approximation of this uh, conditional uh, expectation. Now, as you uh, uh, anticipate, the variance again uh, will be reduced because of uh, the conditioning. So if I can go directly, so this is my uh, stratified sampling uh, estimator. This is what I had uh, before. So if you compute the variance of this estimator it will be Z, Zm square times one over n uh, times uh, the variance uh, of the, um, you know, of this conditional expectation that I had uh, before. Uh, so that's the variance of h of x um, in the domain dm. So that's the variance, the local variance condition that I am in uh, the subdomain uh, dm. Now, um, 
you anticipate, of course, that the uh, uh, variance of this estimator will be uh, less than the variance of the original Monte Carlo estimator L hat. Uh, but uh, let me show you um, a simple uh, uh, case to appreciate uh, this. So let me take uh, that somehow uh, uh, Zm is uh, 1 over m. All right, and let me take that uh, nm is the same number of points in each subdomain. So nm is the total number of samples divided by m. So you can see uh, from this uh, formula for the variance of my stratified sampling estimator, zm squared will give me 1 over m squared, uh, and this will be n over m. Uh, so effectively what I get here is 1 over m times n summation of the conditional variance of h of x in each subdomain uh, dm. So now you can appreciate that, um, remember the original, uh, the original uh, variance of my Monte Carlo estimator is really uh, 1 over n times the variance of h of x. Okay? Now you can appreciate that if by splitting in these subdomains uh, little m, if in average uh, the uh, variance is reduced. So if the following is true, all right, if the following is true, then the variance uh, of um, the stratified sampling estimator will be less than the variance of the original uh, Monte Carlo uh, estimator. I'm going to show you this with one very simple uh, uh, example. So let's say uh, we have uh, pi of x to be uh, equal to 1 uh, in uh, the support domain 0 to 1. And let's take this particular weird h of x that uh, has different values from 0 to 1 half and different values from 1 half to 1. So uh, the one value is 1 over k, the other one is uh, k. So if you go in and you do the calculation of the variance of h of x from 0 to 1, you notice that uh, uh, this uh, uh, variance uh, as um, uh, k goes to infinity, um, goes to infinity, okay? And um, uh, if you actually go and you compute the uh, variance of h of x condition that you are in the domain uh, 0 to 1 half and in, or in the domain 1 half to 1, these local variances, these conditional variances uh, come to be uh, 0. So the stratified sampling um, you know, estimator in this case will give you um, uh, a variance of zero when the actual original estimator will give you um, uh, a variance of, um, uh, of infinity. So that's sort of a, a simple example that demonstrates uh, this uh, stratified sampling uh, uh, situation where, you know, the uh, support space of X now is assumed to be uh, a continuous space. Now, uh, lots of uh, research has been done in this area in, um, in rather different uh, sort of uh, topics and using this uh, idea of um, splitting the stochastic space and doing local calculations. Now, uh, I want you to keep in mind that doing that looks very simple in uh, one dimension or in two dimensions or maybe even in three dimensions. But somehow partitioning the stochastic space in, uh, in 50 dimensions, it's something that is prohibiting. Uh, you will not be able uh, to do it. And then, of course, in each of these regions, you have to compute uh, samples, and that may be prohibiting uh, as well. So you may not have enough samples in every region to compute uh, the, uh, the local variance. So you're going to have, obviously, to make a lot of assumptions uh, to only sample from domains where uh, uh, you know that they contribute to your uh, overall variance and uh, not to sample in other regions maybe where the contribution uh, is zero. So this in high dimension is uh, an issue and more general than that, um, this uh, h of x a lot of times is not directly uh, known explicitly and uh, which means the only way to select um, uh, the partitions uh, dm that we saw in the previous slide is by taking samples uh, of h of x. And as I mentioned, sampling h of x in um, high dimensions is prohibiting. And effectively, 
I think in many ways implementing these ideas of stratified sampling uh, in high dimensions does not seem to be uh, a practical method and that's why you're not going to see it uh, in many applications. However, just to finish the lecture today, uh, the message is by using this conditioning, right, conditioning h of x on y allows you uh, to reduce uh, the variance. That's the raw black wellization um, idea and that's very important and, and uh, has lots of implications in uh, many calculations, in statistics and, and machine learning. So let me just finish there and we will continue uh, with further uh, algorithms on Monte Carlo sampling in the follow-up lecture.